Hi guys, it's Charles Kuntz. I'm one of the surgeons at South Coast. Um, today we're doing an unusual case for me. We were just talking about it. Is a radical mastectomy in a dog, and we just don't see these very often because usually they're done um, in primary care practice. And also because dogs are spayed for the most part, and so they're not getting a lot of mammary gland tumors. Anyway, this dog has been spayed previously, but it was older uh, when it was spayed um, and has developed these masses that are denoted by the black Sharpie. And so um, we are going to do a radical mastectomy on the left side and then just take out, do a little lumpectomy on the right side over here. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. We did cytology, or the referring vet did cytology on some of these masses and the results were non-diagnostic. With mammary gland tumors in dogs, um, Note that about 50% of them are benign and 50% are malignant. And of the ones that are malignant, about half of them have metastasized at the time of surgery. So basically what that means is that 25% of, of memory gland tumors metastasize and 75% do not. Um, so we've done the CT scan to see if there is evidence of metastasis anywhere and there was not. Um, so we're going to do this radical mastectomy. Uh, now note that when the dog twitches, which it might do, it's because it's direct muscle stimulation and not because it's waking up. So we're just making sure the dog is deep enough. Getting some more alfaxan. This dog does have a heart murmur, so it's always a battle between the dog being deep enough and not being hypotensive. So we'll just slow down for a minute to give some more alfaxan. I think we're good now. Track, just spread your fingers out like this, and then we'll just go on this side of the mammary chain and lift that up. So by spaying a dog before the first heat, you reduce the incidence of mammary gland tumors by 99.5%. If you do it between the first and second heat, you reduce it by 95% compared to unspayed. If you do it between the second and third, you reduce it by something like 50%. And if you do it after the third heat, um, it doesn't make any difference. So you don't get any protection. So if you had a the dogs with the memory chain mutilation that was in, in the car, you wouldn't recommend it get sprayed as well? So that's a good question that Bill is asking. If you had a dog that presented that was, say, eight years of age with memory gland tumors and it was still intact, would you spay it at the same time? And the answer to that question is yes, for two reasons. One, reduce the incidence of pyometra. And two, there have been a couple of studies that have shown that there's an improvement in survival metastatic rate with a very hysterectomy done 
at the time of a spay because um, some mammary gland tumors are hormonally active. That's why in women they give tamoxifen um, because of the estrogen receptors on the mammary tissue, on the mammary tumor tissue. Yes, I am. So because these masses are not particularly large or invasive, I'm not taking body wall. If the tumors were fixed to the body wall, then we usually remove it at the same time. So Bill is asking, if we did a bilateral radical mastectomy, would we stage it or do it all in one? In cats, you can do it all in one because they have enough skin. In dogs, you have to stage it. Do one and then a month later, do the other one. Now I'm going, I'm continuing to go down to the body wall caudally because I'm trying to pick up the lymph node as well. What is your depth on the isofluorine? It's on a T-back. Okay. See this coming through the inguinal ring. Mm -hmm. This thing will ring right there. Sorry, on the TV, is it on propofol or? Alfax. Alfax, okay. Do you need to turn up the rate on that? So that's our chain there that we've removed. You can see the tumors on the underside in that glandular tissue. Mm -hmm. Can we get some epivacane, please? And then we'll just come around and excise this little mass as well.
just waiting for on the pivot cane. Can I get some three O PDS, please? And you've given the fentanyl bowls? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's outside of the fence area as well. Okay. As a, okay. How many mics of fentanyl is she on? She's on nine. Okay. And she's on seven new specific for our mics. And she's got a two mic for Okay. Let me see if there are any questions that I haven't answered. Um, I beg your pardon? Adhered on fascia? Adhered on fascia? Uh, so they were not adhered on the fascia? Um, So really controversial question. When do you spay a large breed dog? When do you spay a small breed dog? Um, the evidence now is suggesting that there are lots of orthopedic conditions and cancer conditions, particularly in large breed dogs for the orthopedic conditions that can be avoided if you delay spaying or neutering until they're about 18 months of age. Um, if you spay them um, by 18 months of age, or if you spay them after 18 months of age, you don't get any disadvantage than not spaying them at all. So just leaving them intact for a year and a half, you get all of the advantage of leaving them intact. Um, now that is um, countered by studies that have shown that on average dogs that are spayed or neutered live longer than dogs that are not. I mean, the reason for that is probably, well, at least in part because of wandering and social behavior and stuff like that particularly with male dogs that are likely to roam and get into fights and things like that. Um, it's a very controversial topic. And I, until probably about five years ago, I was telling people you should spay and neuter everything before it's six months of age, because that's what I was taught. But more recently, we're all having to at least modify our tune a little bit. The reason is that the tumors that are reduced by leaving them intact are really nasty tumors like mast cell tumors, lymphoma, osteosarcoma, hemangiosarcoma, whereas the tumors that are reduced by spaying them early are mammary gland tumors, which often are not particularly malignant. That combined with the fact that you're reducing the incidence of orthopedic disease, particularly in large breed dogs, means that in general, um, you should probably be waiting until they're about 18 months of age before you spay or neuter them. 
Um, and we tried to wait with our Labrador, but he started humping with everything when he was about six months of age. So we went ahead and neutered him at that time. But um, in general, I'm probably saying, particularly with large breed dogs, that you should be waiting. Um, it is only necessary to remove the fascial layer if the mass is adhered to the abdominal wall. Bill, what's your dad say about spaying and neutering? Um, I don't know. I haven't discussed it with. Yeah. Um, I know Abby Tipler did a presentation on spaying and neutering um, recently. Um, but yeah, we, I'm not sure what the overall. So we did a big, uh, a big Rivoli lecture on spaying and neutering age and stuff like that, and how it affected things like incontinence, cancer, orthopedic disease, mm. things like that. And in, in general, I think that um, the synopsis is that you probably ought to wait. Yeah. That's it, we're, we're done, yeah. Was that big fatty one in this lipoma? That one up here is the lipoma, I'm leaving that. Are we submitting that one for his to have as well? Or? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, for primary closure after match removal, is it okay to just undermine all around the wound to release the tension instead of making it flat? Uh, so, uh, undermining is fine if you got clean margins. Problem is that if you got dirty margins and then undermine, you're, you're contaminating your entire surgical field with cancer cells. And so if you are 100% confident that you've got a clean margin on the tumor, then go ahead. Otherwise, you're better off doing something else. And I really don't like things like release incisions and meshing the skin on the other side of the leg and stuff like that, because that definitely will contaminate all of those incisions unless you use brand new instruments and change gloves and all that stuff. Unless you're a hundred percent sure that you got a clean margin. To be a little careful tacking down in this area because the femoral artery and vein are right underneath there. Um, so you close that with intradermals. Can I get some 3 0 monosin, please? Um, so with the radical mastectomy, 
as long as it's not too radical, there really shouldn't be too much tension on the closure. And I definitely would not do any tension relieving incisions or anything here uh, for fear of contaminating with um, tumor cells. Sarah, are you joining us? I beg your pardon? I thought I could close for you if you wanted. That sounds great. So Sarah's going to take over for me, and I'll just come over and make sure there aren't any questions that haven't been answered on the stream, and then we will wrap it up. Uh, so there's a question about a knee fold flap. I assume that you're talking about a flank fold flap. Um, and if you did have, particularly caudally, get a wound that you couldn't close because of the tension, you could definitely do a flank fold flap from the front of the leg. Um, there's another question. What precautions do we take for a dog with a murmur, suspected mitral valve disease, anesthesia? Um, so generally, I leave it to the cardiologist to decide whether it needs to be on pemabendin or um, other medications. Um, and then... Uh, we will just watch our fluid rates, and uh, we've got this one on a Tiva, which is an Alfaxan CRI along with fentanyl, uh, and that um, is supposed to be somewhat cardioprotective. And uh, you certainly would not anesthetize a patient that's in heart failure um, without stabilizing it first by putting on furosemide and trying to correct the underlying disease, or trying to not correct the underlying disease, but to stabilize the underlying disease. Um, there's also a question about fascial excision or full body wall excision. So if I uh, had a mass that was uh, on a mammary gland and it was adhered to the body wall, I would try to do just a um, external uh, rectus fascia excision I don't think you need to go full body wall thickness. The only time that you have to go full body wall thickness would be um, if you have an inflammatory mammary gland carcinoma that's embedded all the way through the body wall, and those do um, terribly. Um, as far as our dose for the Alfaxin CRI, right now we're on seven micrograms, seven milligrams per kilogram per hour. Um, and then this is, that is instead of isoflurane, although this dog was maybe a little bit light during, um, and it's um, possible that maybe adding some isoflurane or uh, something else might be of some benefit. So I think we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications, and we will see you again, hopefully, tomorrow.